In this video, let us discuss 15 DNA structure problems, often most common questions in competitive exams. Hopefully, will give you a deeper understanding of DNA structure. Let's begin with some basic questions regarding the DNA structure. A structure like this is given and we need to complete the DNA structure. First question is the polarity of the DNA. It is given 5 prime 1 and is given. So we need to find out the polarity of other ends. It's very easy. As we know, DNA is anti-parallel. If this end is 5 prime, then this end will be 3 prime. And both strands are anti-parallel and runs in opposite direction. Therefore, if this strand, this end is 5 prime, this strand, this end will be 3 prime. So with the knowledge of one end, or polarity of one end, we can write down all the other three ends. Second question, write the bases. Here guanine is given, which is the second base. Here Charkov's rule, adenine always pairs with thiamine and cytosine always pairs with guanine. It's very simple. If it is G, here it will be C. If it, if it is adenine, here it will be thiamine. And the bonding is adenine bonds with thiamine by two hydrogen bonds, whereas cytosine bonds with guanine by three hydrogen bonds. The third question, label the structure or dimensions. Here you can see this is the sugar phosphate backbone like this. Then these are the nitrogenous bases and this is a major groove and this is a minor groove where proteins or enzymes interact with the DNA. Then calculate the length diameter of DNA double helix. So it's given here the adjacent base pair, the distance between adjacent base pair is 0.34 nanometer. So what will be the length of a turn? A turn of DNA is made up of 10 base pairs. So it will be 0.34 into 10, that is 3.4 nanometer. In terms of Armstrong, this is 3.4 Armstrong. That is the distance between adjacent base pairs. So a turn that is made up of 10 base pairs, it will be 34 Armstrong. Now the next question is regarding the complementarity. So given the DNA sequence 5 prime C, G, T, A, A, T, G, C, what would be the sequence of the complementary strand? It's very simple. The only thing we need to remember is DNA is anti-parallel. Therefore, and apply the Charkov's rule. If in the first sequence, if it is C, it will be G, G, C, T, A, A, T like that. But remember, this end is 5 prime. Therefore, the complementary strand is opposite and anti-parallel. Therefore, this end will be 3 prime as both the strands runs in opposite direction. Next question, if a segment of DNA has 15 base pairs, what is the length of the DNA segment? So how to solve this problem? We need to know the distance between adjacent base pairs. We know that the distance between adjacent base pairs is 3.4 Armstrong or 0.34 nanometer. So there are 15 base pair. This is a very simple question. 15 into 3.4. That is the distance between base pairs. That is 51 Armstrong. Question number seven. How many base pairs are there in five turns of a DNA double helix? So we need to know how many base pairs are there in a single turn. In a single turn, of DNA is made up of 10 base pairs. So the number of base pairs per turn of DNA is 10. As you see, this is a turn. So number of base pairs in five turns, it is 10 into five, that is 50 base pairs. Question number eight, how many hydrogen bonds are there between the two strands of a DNA segment that contains only five adenine residues or adenine bases? As we know, adenine forms two hydrogen bonds with thiamine. If there are only five adenine bases, then the number of hydrogen bonds is 5 into 2, that is 10 hydrogen bonds. There is an easy method to solve these questions, counting the number of hydrogen bonds. So this is a double-stranded DNA, and you can see the sugar phosphate backbone, and these are the base pairs. Let us focus this region. Let us zoom in this region as you see these are the hydrogen bonds. So this is the hydrogen bond. Guanine pairs with cytosine by three hydrogen bonds. Remember, guanine pairs with cytosine by three hydrogen bonds, whereas thiamine pairs with adenine through two hydrogen bonds. So this knowledge is essential for solving these type of questions. So number of hydrogen bonds between adenine and thiamine is two and guanine and cytosine is three. So the base pairing is as per Charkov's rule. 
Therefore, we have a simple equation. Number of hydrogen bonds in a DNA molecule is 2 into number of AT base pairs plus 3 into number of GC base pairs. Let us work out some questions. What is the number of hydrogen bonds in a double helical BDNA structure of 100 base pairs with 30 adenine residues in one of the two strands? So adenine residues are given or adenine base. So the number of hydrogen bonds between A2, A adenine and thiamine is 2. Between cytosine and guanine is 3. We know that. Total number of base pairs is given. It is 100 base pairs. So number of adenine residues or bases or nucleotides. It is given adenine residues. It is 30. So there will be number of thiamine residues will also be 30 as per Charkov's rule. Adenine always pairs with thiamine. So total number of AT base pairs, base pairs it will be 60 residues, adenine 30 plus the base basis of guanine 30 forming 60 residues. That is by 2, 30 base pairs. Number of base pairs is 30 base pairs. Adenine and thiamine forms, bonded together forms a base pair. Number of GC base pairs will be, the rest will be of the 100, 30 is by this adenine and thiamine. Then, of course, from 100, the rest will be guanine and cytosine. Guanine and cytosine forms, makes up 70 base pairs. That is 100 minus 30. Then apply this number in this equation. Number of hydrogen bonds in a DNA molecule is equal to 2 into number of 80 base pairs. That is 30. 2 into 30 plus 3 into number of GC base pairs. That is 70. 3 into 70. That is 60 plus 2, 10. The answer is 270 hydrogen bonds. So we can solve these sequentially stepwise very easily and finally substitute the value in this formula. Let us do one more question. In a 68 nanometer long DNA molecule, adenine constitutes 25%. How many hydrogen bonds would be present between the strands? So here the length of the DNA molecule is given and also the adenine base percentage is also given. First, we have to find out the number of base pairs. For that, we should know the distance between adjacent nuclear pairs. Base pairs, we know that it is 3.4 Armstrong. So, the length of the DNA molecule is given, which is 68 nanometer. That should be converted to Armstrong. That is 68 into 10, 680 Armstrong. The total number of base pairs is equal to 680 by 3.4. That is the length between adjacent base pairs. So, 68 nanometer long DNA molecule has 200 base pairs. Percentage of adenine residues is 25%. So, as per Charkov's rule, percentage of thiamine residues will also be 25%. So, number of adenine plus thiamine base pairs makes up 50%. 25 plus 25, 50. 50%, there are 200 base pairs. So 50% of 200 base pairs, that is 200 into 50 by 100, that is 100 base pairs of the total 200 base pairs will be adenine and thiamine. Then it is very easy to calculate the number of GC base pairs. It will be total is 200, 200 minus 100, that is 80 base pairs, that will be 100 base pairs. Now we can substitute these values in the equation. Number of hydrogen bonds in a DNA molecule is equal to 2 into AT base pairs plus 3 into GC base pairs. That is 2 into 100 plus 3 into 100 that is 200 plus 300 that is 500 hydrogen bonds. So we have given a detailed video on this with more number of questions. You can refer that for more. Now the next question is how to find out the phosphodiester bonds, number of phosphodiester bonds in a DNA molecule. Let's begin with a simple equation. So this is a double helical DNA. You can see this is a sugar phosphate backbone. Let us focus these bases. Let us zoom in. As you can see, this is the phosphodiester bond. Phosphodiester bond is the bond that connects two nucleotides. This is a nucleotide 1 and this is a nucleotide 2. So these are connected by phosphodiester bond, a phosphate with two ester linking together two nucleotide. That is why it is called as phosphodiester. Di means two. So this is the first phosphodiester bond and this is the second phosphodiester bond. So 
in the first strand there are three base pairs in the first strand there is two phosphodiester bond the same is the case with the second strand also of the three nucleotides there are only two phosphodiester bond as the n nucleotides will not form a phosphodiester bond so number of phosphodiester bond in the first strand is equal to n minus 1 3 minus 1 that is 2. Number of phosphodiester bond in the second strand is also n minus 1 that is 3 minus 1, 2. Therefore, two strands, double stranded DNA, it will be 2 into n minus 1. So let us make it as 2 minus 2 n minus 2. It is 2 n minus 2. So this is the equation for finding out the number of phosphodiester bond. Where n is the number of base pairs, here it will be. 2n. Here n is number of base pairs 1, 2, 3. 2 into 3, that is 6 minus 2, that is 4. Here it will be 4 phosphodiester bonds, as you see 1, 2, 3, and 4. So by using this simple equation, you can work out these problems very easily. Let us work out some problems. How many phosphodiester bonds are present in a DNA with 50 base pairs? A very simple question. So, use this equation. Number of base pairs in a DNA is n. So, we will be using the same number of base pairs is 50. It will be 2n minus 2. 2n minus 2. That is 2 into 50. 100 minus 2. That is 98 phosphodiester bond in a DNA molecule with 50 base pairs. Hope you are clear. For more details, you can refer our video on this topic, the link is in the description. Let us do one more question. In a DNA molecule, the number of phosphodiester bonds are 1200. Find the number of base pairs. A reverse, a question that is in a reverse order. We need to find out the number of base pairs. First, we know that the number of base pairs is n. We use the same formula. Here we need to find out the number of base pairs. The equation is 2n minus 2. So 2n minus 2 is given. 2n minus 2 is 1200. The number of phosphodiester bond is given. We need to find out this n. So 2n is equal to 1200 plus 2, that is 1202. n is equal to 1202 by 2, that is 601. This is the answer. 601 is the answer. So by using this simple formula, we can easily find out number of phosphodiester bond in different contextual questions. And finally, the Charkov's rule. Problems from Charkov's rule. According to Charkov's rule, the amount of adenine equals the amount of thiamine, whereas amount of guanine equals the amount of cytosine, or adenine always pairs with thiamine, guanine always pairs with cytosine. Adenine and guanine are two ringed that forms the purines. Thiamine and cytosine are single ringed and that forms the pyrimidines. Let us work out one question. Question number 13. In humans, there is approximately 30% adenine. What is the percentage of other nitrogen bases? Nitrogen bases, it's very simple. According to Chargaff's rule, this is adenine and guanine is equal to cytosine and thiamine. This is purine. Purine is equal to concentration of purine is equal to concentration of pyrimidine. So, all together it will be 100%. So, adenine always pairs with thiamine. And cytosine always pairs with guanine. It is given adenine is 30%. Adenine is 30%. So therefore, thiamine will also be 30%. So that makes 60%. 30 plus 30, 60%. So now 40% is there. And therefore, G, guanine and cytosine, 100 minus 60 makes up 40%. Now the percentage of nitrogen spaces Guanine will be 20%. If both together makes 40%, then concentration of guanine base will be 20% and cytosine base will be 20%. So the answer is adenine 30%, thiamine 30%, guanine 20% and cytosine 20%. It's very easy. Let us do one more question. A segment of DNA has 120 adenine and 120 cytosine bases. The total number of nucleotides present in the segment is here, here also we use the Charkov's rule. Adenine always pairs with thiamine and cytosine pairs with guanine. It is given 120 adenine residues. 
or adenine bases and cytosine residues are also given that is also 120. Adenine always pairs with thiamine. So if there is 120 adenine residues, there will be 120 thiamine residues. Cytosine always pairs with guanine. Here also, cytosine always pairs with guanine. As you see, if cytosine is 120, this guanine will also be 120. So total number of nucleotides will be the number of adenine residues plus thiamine residues plus cytosine residues plus guanine residues. It will be 120 plus 120 plus 120 plus 120 that is 480 nucleotides are present in that DNA segment. So these are very simple questions. We need to apply Charkov's rules and always remember, read the question carefully whether whether bases or nucleate base pairs are given in the question. That's very important. Here it is cytosine bases. Sometimes base pairs will be given. So you should remember that and apply according to the question. And let's wind up with a simple final question. What is the radius of the DNA molecule? As we know, the diameter of DNA molecule is 2 nanometer, that is 20 Armstrong. Therefore, the radius is diameter by 2, that is 20 by 2, that is 10 Armstrong. Hope you are benefited from this video. You can refer the links given above for more details on DNA structure and other questions related to this Charkov's rule, phosphodiester bond and hydrogen bond. Take care. Stay blessed. Thank you so much. You are with biologyexamsforyou.com.